These days, if you don't have a strong website, you're toast. So I turned to web.com to build mine. I'm you're now tuned into me, 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 me. Shout out to, to the whole QC. To the whole QC, to all his loved ones. You know what I mean? We, we want to show our respects on that aspect first. You know, when I got the call from you, you know, OG, you know, we was a little reluctant to do the interview because, you know, fucking serious. So this nigga caught them. I'm thinking Gilly and them still want to get to the bottom of the shit. Gilly and Wallow, so 100, I think they want to get to the bottom of the shit. This nigga called them to do it? And what the fuck? Shit is crazy, bro. Grown ass, old ass man sitting up here with montage hat. Come on, niggas look like they promoting the album up there, my nigga. All three of y'all? If anything, the only one that should be there is the son. Go ahead and explain what happened, nigga. We seen you on the end, uh, on the video. Walk past the motherfucker. You was there. They came there to function with you. Pops wasn't there. I don't know if the nigga in the middle wasn't there, but let the little nigga, let, let, let the son, let Lil Prince speak up, bro. These niggas called these niggas for a motherfucking interview. Ain't that about a bitch? This was four months ago. The nigga said he was reluctant. Yeah, Gilly, I would have did that shit. And I know, I know, I know, I know million dollars a game. I know they probably did it. We need to let the people hear the truth. Whoop the whoop whoop. And it would have been real if they would have connected them niggas. This is crazy to me. This is fucking crazy. To me, nigga. I'm. Man. Somebody lost their life. You know, it was a sensitive situation. So, you know, we talked. And then when you, when you alerted me that you had sat down with, you know, P from QC. And, you know, everybody saw things eye to eye. And, you know. That really had, you know, was like, okay, well, cool. As long as you, you see eye to eye with, the, you know. No disrespect, but Pre from QC ain't got shit to do with this, nigga. No disrespect, but P, Coach K, they ain't got shit to do with this. This is one fact. I can, look, nigga, we got a, we got a, we got a, we got a fucking uh, group with Lil Baby, 21 Savage, Migos. Then, yes, the record label going to have to speak. Yeah, little baby, woo 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 but 21 Savage and y'all. But the Migos wasn't supposed to be here because, man, fuck music. That's what niggas don't understand. This is a family issue. Nigga get married, y'all want to throw the music in there. And they get evicted, it's because of the music. He lost his money on music. And then get smoked, y'all still want to talk. Nigga, this is three motherfuckers that will per- God, God damn it. He's talking about music, 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 music. These motherfuckers lost their life, bro. And these niggas dealing with the shit. How I leave the fucking group less than a year later, my little cousin gets smoked. Now he left the group. A motherfuckers think that just because he left the group and Takeoff got smoked, off uh, Takeoff got smoked, he's not supposed to care because he left the fucking group. That's his fucking cousin. Niggas is crazy to me, bro. That shit is sad Either as fuck. It's, it's most close to him and y'all got everything figured out then. Okay, then you can come speak your truths. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, that's out of the family, and, and this straight. side of the family. You no, know, my mama, I'm not even on the lying. same accord. So, um, with that speak, being said, man, come on, bro. You know, let's get into this interview, man. I'm, yeah, yeah, and I would, I would like to also, man. Uh, I want to echo everything that was said. You know, <clears throat> I want to echo. We this nigga like reads a lot. He know what our the, condolences. You know what I mean, I know, as well, because, niggas, and, and definitely to take our mother, you know what I mean, because uh, I put her at the top of the list because it's an unnatural thing to lose your kid, you know what I mean, I felt all kinds of pain. From- yesterday, yesterday, it's been a year, it hit the year anniversary since my mama died. The only thing that got me through that shit, bro, the only thing that got me through that shit is me having kids, I'm going to tell you why. Yes, I think about it every day. I don't wake up not one morning crying thinking about my mama. I hate that shit. But one thing I understood, bro, when it comes to life, you're supposed to bury your parents. Your parents ain't supposed to bury their kids, bro. That's not life. <clears throat> I will never want to go through that one. You're supposed to bury your parents. Your parents are not supposed to bury their kids. Take off mama is going through the worst experience in her fucking life that she will ever go. I don't care if you lost a mama. 
I don't care if you get fired, you get shot, do 10 years in prison. This is the worst experience. Y'all know how, what's the worst thing you ever been? This is the worst thing you can go through in your fucking life. It's losing a kid. And people on the God. For sure. I'm losing my mother, For my sure. father, you know, brothers, sisters, cousins, best friends different. and different things. But, you know, to lose your child is a whole different, you know, a whole different kind of pain. So, you know, I sympathize with that to the fullest because that's what you call unnatural. You know what I mean? They're supposed to bury us, not if life, us burying them. Exactly. Absolutely. If life goes to plan, yeah. if life goes to plan, listen to me. Everybody's going to die. Me and everybody you fucking know. These sneakers, the, the lawnmowers you hear outside, the people that's controlling those, the horns you hear outside, the people that's driving them cars, everybody going to die some fucking day. If life goes to plan, you're supposed to bury your parents. You're not supposed to bury your kids, bro. You not. That's a different kind of out of. And, uh, and people are still living like, after it happened. There's like some strong motherfuckers. FBG duck mama lost all her goddamn sons. Don't speak up on this woman, bro. She ain't got shit to do with this, but I'm just saying, when the what? That's a different kind of woman right there, nigga. And she's still smiling. Doing and if that's that, that's a different kind of pain, bro. Y'all know that little shit in your stomach when you about to cry, hit your stomach, then your chest, and then your head, then your tears. I'm in my chest, so I'm gonna stop talking about this shit right now because I'm about to get some tears in this motherfucker. You Swear say God. this home and auto bundle, Extrava Fest to save a fun. Time to ring the savings bell. <laughs> you was there, and you know, a lot of people seen you trying to de escalate the situation. Um, and then things just went left. What happened, Mike? Well, it really, it really. Hey, who that? Who, who, who old boy in the middle? I know he a part of their team. He probably family, but like exactly who is he? CEO, a cousin, a brother, a son. Who, who is that? He do a good job by standing out the light. Cause it's my first time ever, ever, ever seeing this nigga. Ever seeing this nigga. And again, this ain't no, no type of pot Wait, hold on it wasn't a situation to escalate because it really wasn't it wasn't there it, you know what i'm saying like it looked like it looked but it really wasn't that type of situation you know what i'm saying that's why i even oh, asked son, myself I heard that him say like, Prince, that's it son, wasn't even there right, you know what i'm saying right, I mean, like right. we from the cuts you know when certain things are what it is you know what i'm saying you know and because you had so many years of looking and seeing and feeling and dealing you know what i'm saying and it wasn't even that, you know what I'm saying? We like, you know, it was oh, really a, a beautiful about. night, you know what I'm saying? We all family, we enjoying, everybody kicking it, you know what I'm saying? It, um, it wasn't a situation that it turned out to be, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, me saying I'm de-escalating, I'm basically just telling nephew, like, hey, it ain't worth talking about. He's like, man, you won't talk about basketball. It ain't, leave it alone, stop talking about it. Here, like, stop talking about basketball. You don't talk about basketball. Stop talking. It wasn't about no dice game. Niggas got in a shootout over some grown ass men in the basketball. <sighs> Niggas got a shootout either saying, nigga, I'm better than you or my team is better than yours when this really ain't nobody fucking team. To Jay, to the princess, bro. Again, again. Like I told you in the beginning. I don't feel like these niggas had shit to do with this. I'm keeping it real. I don't feel like they had nothing to do with this. What they say, a freak accident or some shit. I think that's exactly what the fuck it was. I don't. I promise you, I don't think that. It's just, at some point, you got to shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? At some point, just let this shit go. Let it, let whatever happened, happen. Y'all don't have nothing to do with it. Y'all reach out to the family on the low. Be supporters of the family on the low. You know what I'm saying? Make sure the mama's straight. Make sure that happened on y'all watch. Y'all indebted to, to, to take off in this family for a while. I ain't going to say for life, but for a while. You don't do this shit four months after he got murdered in your care. This some shit happened like 
fucking how Lauren London doing uh movies four years after Nipsey died. We want to see this shit three years in the future, bro. Then y'all tell y'all fucking side of the story. Four years in the future. Don't come on here and try to and try to speak your piece when a lot of niggas don't even think y'all had nothing to do with it. What piece are you really what uh piece are you really speaking? This shit makes no sense to me. We already got the thing about it is, the thing about it is, when it's an altercation between two people or whoever it is, bro, ain't one side finna give you the 100 side. They gonna always give you the side to make it look like they prevail, they better, they not wrong. You know what I'm saying? So we only hearing this by them getting up there. It just look biased in the motherfucker because y'all only going y'all will not say some little shit like. Man, I told Takeoff to shut the fuck up. When I came back, they was arguing. They wouldn't even say the littlest shit because it'll make them look bad. So the whole time they gonna be up here, bro. I understand y'all not had nothing to do with it, but pleading it and trying to prove that y'all not had nothing to do with it just make no sense to me. To me, we all got our own fucking opinions. It's just to me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about no gambling. It wasn't about none of the things that the media and all these. You know, we call the media whores just trying to capitalize and. and <laughs> what you call them? And all these, you know, we call the media whores just trying to capitalize and, and, and draw a story that wasn't there. Because we had already been outside. Hey, give me the definition of a media whore real quick. I just want to see if y'all know the definition. Just give me a definition of a media whore, just real quick. It's kind of funny to me. A period of time before that other conversation started. You know what I'm saying? I Me, mean, the homies, you know, everybody went outside to smoke. You know what I'm saying? We just sit back, kidding, then they went, you know, we're going to talk, they talk basketball. You know what I'm saying? Just nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, so it wasn't it wasn't that type of situation or that type of energy to where you would feel like something had escalated to where it was supposed to be a problem. So okay, so to the people that say, okay, Prince family been doing this for years. And they gilly been bringing day. people down. They've been hosting them. You know, nothing like this ever happened. You feel right. what I'm saying? What 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 about the people that feel like Still, nothing should have happened, cause they was they was with the you know they was with the Prince family, and the Prince family is well respected. Nothing should have happened. What do you say to that? What I would what I would say to that is, you know, I have a track record, man, and the Prince family have a track record of thirty plus years of, you know what I mean, honoring and 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 loving on our guests and and. Being what I guess, and no shit like this never happened. But here's the thing, and this is what people don't understand: uh, we ain't never had nobody to attack us. <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know? So that was when, an attack. When a man attack a situation with a weapon, then you know it become a playing field where you know any and everything goes. So that's. I'm lost. Is he saying they was attacked while they was in there? That's why they started shooting? Because I know somebody from Migos started shooting, but that was probably because them niggas start shooting, right? So what he mean what he mean by attack? That, please, please don't 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 do this. Please don't do this. <laughs> Let's not do this. He <laughs> That's what we're dealing with right here, and that's the root. Of this situation Attacked And he didn't attack The Prince family But he attacked You know People that we know And it was totally Unnecessary Who the fuck you He talking about For you To Attack a man With a weapon Because What that's gonna do Is put a man In a position Where he wanna Protect himself And that's what That was the root Of igniting This gunplay But to clarify it Real quick So they can understand we're not talking about takeoff attacking nobody. 
No, not at all. Just so they they can. Yeah, stand. no, not not at all. Not not take off, and 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 not nobody from Houston, you know, attack nobody until, you know, the homie that was with them would take off them. Whatever his name may be, you know, he he giving all kinds of statements on this police report we have, so we can read his name and everything because he. Okay, so according to them, now the story. This is my first time hearing this shit. So now the story is. Somebody from Migos got off on one of these niggas, so they got off back, which ended in take off death. God damn. <laughs> oh, shit. The niggas said. I was hoping that you don't hear and do this shit. I, this whole interview in the beginning, that nigga Gilly said, y'all called me. Whoopty whoop whoop. I thought Gilly and them called them. Like damn what the fuck They calling them for an interview They know Gilly Nail One of the biggest Biggest podcasts When it comes to the culture Right So Then my second thought Oh they got up here So they can go ahead and plead They uh They fear for just letting niggas know Like look He came over there with us But He died on our watch It wasn't supposed to happen Like we just brought him out there To have fun It was Halloween It was his birthday Like to everybody else we sorry as soon as i press play that was not the fucking case now we get here seven minutes in the interview on the dot these niggas is saying that the reason takeoff got smoked because the nigga from takeoff camp started the whole shit i wasn't there but his i don't from the reports i don't think that happened I wasn't there, but I don't what the put fuck? himself in a position where uh, he's cooperating and telling a lot of different lies. So we may as well shine the light so he on the real root to the issue, which is which is this homie, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. in this paperwork. So as everybody can see on the video, you know, this dude without having a green light from from uh, offset, nobody told this man to. You know what I mean? Or attack somebody and you get a What video he talking about? Cause if this is oh shit. If this nigga not capping, then you gotta say the me go started the shit, right? What video he talking about? I know uh what video this nigga talking about? Cause the video I seen from the night, bro, they probably had like five or six different camera angles. You had a lot of niggas on the internet trying to bust it down. But I never, that's what I'm saying, we almost in. It's my first time after four months hearing that the niggas, uh, the Migos started this shit. Toxic game. So you saying in the TMZ video that it showed old boy pulling out a, 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 a pistol first? Did the nigga pull out the pistol? Then they start arguing or he pulled out the pistol because they was arguing? I don't know. That's what I'm asking y'all niggas. I ain't see the, the video that he talking about. It looked like Takeoff got murdered. He was murdered on accident. Well, not even accident. My bad. It looked like the niggas. He pulled it out because they was arguing. But in order to shoot somebody with a pistol, bro, in order to shoot somebody with a pistol, in order to claim self-defense, he got to point that pistol at you. You can't shoot nobody. If somebody walk inside of a building and just have a pistol out, bro, that's legal than a motherfucker, especially in a place like Texas, Arkansas, Alabama, Nevada. You can walk around with a Draco in your arm, bro. Walk right past the police because open carry is legal. You cannot shoot a man because he pulled his pistol. If he pointed it, or threaten y'all with it, then yes, that's self-defense. But you can't shoot a man and argue self-defense or say that he started just because he pulled out his pistol. You can't do that shit. Quavo, I mean. You know what I mean? Nobody gave him a, a green light to attack, you know, a 5'2 guy. But who shot first? It's a big nigga. You know what I mean? So I guess he felt like, you know, the little homie is somebody he can just hit and knock out and different things like that and it 
it was a wrong thing to do, man, and it was an embarrassing Monica, thing. You can't to hold do a pistol, bro. Because it was, you know, like Mike Legal. said, it was so unnecessary. It wasn't even that type of atmosphere. You know, y'all talking about a basketball game. You know what I mean? A, a two on two, playing a two on two, and now so that's arguing you with turn a misdemeanor into a felony. Nigga, an argument on a basketball game ain't no fucking misdemeanor. That's an argument. What you mean turn a misdemeanor to a felony? I'm going to say this. A lot of people seen the video. It was a few seconds. And Junior, they seen you walking by. Um, we understand that, uh, you know, Quavo, take off. They was down here with y'all. But they seen you walking by. He's, he's laying on the ground. You got Mike bending down, and they seen you walking by. What, what, what took place there? This is the crazy thing about the video, right? Is say the first word after nine minutes. One scenario is that they see Mike on the ground trying to help take off. But in the video, Mike was right behind me. People didn't peep that. People think that I'm the one who had a voice. I mean, I'm the one who was speaking in the video when I wouldn't. If you go back and look at the video, Mike is walking just like his right pops. behind me. They took three seconds of a situation where I was caught on video and turned it into what they wanted it to be. Because no lie, that's all I was hearing too. This nigga Mike, this nigga Jay Prince walked past takeoff while he was bleeding and didn't help. That nigga not lying about that. I was hearing that so fucking much. But in all actuality, we had I mean, been there for a while. Mike was following me so we can go to the restroom. People. So he can uh, wash the blood off his hands and so he can enlighten me to what transpired because I wasn't even out there when this transpired. I was inside paying a bill. So I had no knowledge of what had transpired outside. As I'm walking to the, I had just got done paying the bill. As I'm walking to the door, I hear gunshots and then I also hear bullets coming through the glass. So I got out the way because I was almost at the door. So I end up getting out the way, and sadly, what had taken place had taken place. But in that three second clip, it was me and Mike walking to the restroom so he can wash the blood off his hands and so he can enlighten me to what transpired outside. It was rumors that after all this occurred. I've been in that situation before, bro. And I promise y'all. The blood started drying on my hands before I thought about going to the bathroom and wiping the shit off. But one of your friends or one of your loved ones get killed, bro. That's the last thing you think. Of. Well, I can't say that because those them niggas went straight to the bathroom. But I'm not. Hold on. Where my phone at? Where my phone at? What's up, bro? Hey, I'm live right now, right? You live, you on speaker. The incident, bro. When you pulled up on Slauson and 8th Ave, shot up, what happened? Huh? Can you hear me? What happened after you got shot? What did you do? Huh? Can you hear me, nigga? Yeah. Yeah, I just... <laughs> what you mean? What you got me on the middle? I mean, I don't know. What you want me to do? You got me. What you want me to do? Uh, the replay? What? Nah, not the replay on uh where it happened at or who did it. I'm talking about after you got shot, where you pulled up and what happened. Shit, I pulled up to the house. I pulled up to the house, to the villa. Oh shit, I, I put us honking. I was honking at the gate. Everybody came outside. Shit, all y'all came outside. Everybody crying and shit. Everybody pulling me out the uh, car. Niggas sat down, slossing and get slossing. 
And straight to the hospital, right? Um, yeah, then, you know, bro, bro pulled up and uh, threw me in the car, took me to the hospital. And, you know, we blessed up. All right, I'm, I'm going to call you right back, bro. I'm going to call you right back. This is a situation I'm talking about. This nigga wasn't trying to get Kermit. He know he on live and shit. So, look. This is um 2016, right? <sighs> Me and the homies, my cousin, we on Slauson. That's where my mama... My mama been living in Vegas at this point, but that's where I grew up at. So when we go back, I don't care who there. We on the porch. You know what I'm saying? It's these apartment buildings. So fucking uh the homie, that's my nigga AJ. Um, we see this nigga coming down Slauson. First we hear we hear the horn, like we on Slauson the eighth Ave. Slauson and Crenshaw is probably like you can hold your breath and run from Slauson the 8th Avenue and Slauson the Crenshaw. That's how close it is. You know what I'm saying? We hearing shit from a horn from Slauson the Crenshaw. Just like, what the fuck? Then we see this nigga car on the opposite side of the street. Right? We all standing at the gate. This nigga pull up. Uh, uh, uh. We see him in the car like this. We like, what the fuck? As soon as we hop off the porch in the driver's seat. It's like three big ass bullet holes in the driver. I mean, in the passenger seat. Mind you, this how the car going. We right here. So the first thing we see is the passenger seat when we come off the court. I mean, when we come off the porch, he coming down saucing like this. We get on his side of the door. This nigga had like five bullet holes in the door, bro. Legs shot all the fuck up. Ribs, all this shit. Shut up, right? I ain't have my whip. It's like. Seven Seven homies on the porch One of the niggas like I'm gonna go get my baby mama car Ambulance gonna take too long Get this nigga to the car Take him to the hospital Whatever the case The point I'm trying to make is I done wash my hands Till I got back to the hood To the homies house Like You know what I'm saying I done wash my hands Till I got back over there I was not Thinking about Oh shit The homie got shot Let me go ahead and uh Wash my hands real quick And take him to the hospital Oh, the homie shot. We at the hospital now. Let me wash my hands. I'm hoping this nigga live. This nigga shot all in his ribs, all in his legs and shit. I'm not thinking about it. Let me wash my Nigga, we standing right there just waiting for the doctor for like two and a half hours for this fat bitch. I mean, not, she ain't got nothing to do with this, my bad. For her to come out there to be like, he's going to live. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Is he paralyzed? No, he not paralyzed. He's going to have a bad four. Whoop, whoop. We like, all right, bat. Cool. <laughs> my nigga straight. You know what I'm saying? Washing hands and all that. That's just me, bro. I don't see how a nigga get popped. The police or the ambulance not even there yet. You niggas wash your hands. I've been in like, yeah, that, that. Bro, this shit happened to me like three times in my life. Not one time I washed my fucking hands. On my kids. On my mama, not you one was time. The one that took Quavo and them to the hospital. Y'all still was together after the I stayed. I stayed with Quavo we stayed out there probably like two or three hours together before we all parted ways and made sure each other was cool. Like, me and him stayed out there. Like, uh, one other person pulled up, but it was me and him that stayed out there for hours after this transpired, so. Yeah, so it's just interesting how, you know, one can take a three-second lie, you know what I mean, and, and contaminate, you know, a bunch of, uh, uh, damn fools that believe anything that they see, and when in, in actuality, as you can see, these two was with Quavo. You know what I mean from beginning and end to end. They dropped him off. They never left his side. You know because here's the thing: Takeoff is not the only one got hit that night. You know what I mean. Got shot in the of, head. of our daughter got hit in the head. You know, so somebody could have been. That's what I'm saying. I don't think these niggas really just wanted all that shit to fucking happen. It's accountability at this point. It's accountability at this point. This will not be me. You know what I'm saying? They 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 handle shit different. Different section for different people. You are. I mean, you're a product of your environment. This is probably how Houston niggas handle shit. They don't want 
they don't want shit to die down. They don't want everybody thinking they did something. They can't wait to shit blow over. They want to speak their truth. They want to. So I guess this is what they doing. But I couldn't. I couldn't imagine me doing this shit. If a nigga got smoked at my venue on my birthday, Halloween party, and then you know what I'm saying, been mad imagine. about that and wanted to come back and and do some things. So they was there with with the homie, and whenever he uh, decide to speak, he gonna validate everything we saying. Quavo, Quavo. you know Quavo. what I mean? Because he, he know he was never abandoned. He know he was never disrespected. He know every time he have came to Houston. It been nothing but love and respect. That's why he came so many times. He said, whenever Quavo decided to speak and they speak, and you want me to tell you the cold shit about what he just said? If he knowing that Quavo gonna say all that, that they didn't have nothing to do with it, it would have been best for them to come out, to wait till Quavo came out and spoke first. Then it would have made them look good. It would have made them look innocent, like they wasn't a part of this shit. When you actually got Quavo saying they didn't have nothing to do with it, whoop de whoop whoop. So since Quavo ain't speaking now about these niggas coming out, you got me and everybody else opinions on what these niggas doing right now. A lot of niggas is iffy with it. A lot of niggas okay with it. It just, if you know Quavo, when the homie come out and speak, y'all gonna see he wasn't disrespected. Well, let the homie come out and speak before y'all say some shit. That's the crazy part. That nigga take off set. They did five interviews. It's crazy. Times. When 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 you hear Houston, you hear mob ties. And some people would say that it's some type of protocol for people to check in when they come to the city. I heard and this that. coming from a person like me and Gil, we ain't never check in when we came to the city. Yeah. So is there supposed to be a certain protocol? Give me that little? What get, get you like five seven one to check five, in five, when we came to the city? So is there supposed to be a certain protocol for people to check in? I remember you saying I won't forget the bitch. We trying to watch it. I remember you saying. I would love it. This one really no happened replay is brought to you by progressive. progressive. One thing no one would challenge. For <laughs> no oh, shit, that just reminded me. I need to. I need to pay my progressive. <laughs> Oh my kids, I got a grip. <laughs> I got to pay my progressive bill. It's just it's crazy. Oh, you know, and I begin with me, and then he can speak, and they can speak for the other generation. But I'm a never, you know what I mean? We don't have time for no sucker shit like that. You know, now a lot of people from the different police departments and all these different people want to insinuate. Like we extorting people, they have to check in. Man, that ain't no money in that shit. I I wouldn't have. We got. I got more money than I could spend. Mm. Right? Flex so I don't want to say go give you. What that shit ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna turn out right. Cause real. Hey, hey, real quick in the comments, what do y'all think checking in mean? Hold on, real quick. The niggas ain't gonna have that no way. You know, check in, check in for what? But but on the flip side, there is give someone money, uh, someone what money, you call a, a a brownie point to be able to. Yeah, I said paying money. That's not what it is. Checking in is basically. Um, first of all, checking in started with the internet. You know what I'm saying? If y'all remember, not to you youngins, that's probably like. 14, 13 right now Because he was like 9 at the time <laughs> You know what I'm saying 10 years old and shit But look If y'all remember 4 years 5 years ago All these rappers was like You can't come here This is a no fly zone Y'all remember that shit right 
Rappers just always say, this is a no-fly zone. You can't come to Atlanta. You can't come to L.A. You can't come to New York. Well, L.A. niggas don't do that. But you can't come to New York. You can't come to Wooty Woo, right? Checking in insinuates extortion. Checking in, what people think it means is you got to give somebody some money so you can come here. It's not the case. You can give one gang some money and the other gang rob your dumb ass. You can give five gangs some money and the six gang rob your dumb ass. It's not the case. Checking in, checking in. It's basically, you go into the city that you ain't from. You contact an OG from the city or somebody in that city that got respect. Not just anybody, somebody that got respect. Let them know you're being there. So when you need some weed, a car, probably a couple homies from their hood to roll with you to make sure you straight. That's what checking in means. All right. Checking in is basically a respect relationship issue to keep it 100. Nine times out of 10, if somebody calling you to check in, you're not going to ask him for no money. You're going to look at him like he respects you. That's where the green light come in. He calling me, telling me he come to the city. He respecting me. Boom, we straight. Let me make sure he's straight. Grown men care about respect, bro. It's not about the money. You can't, okay, give me 10000 You can fly around the city for a week. Give me 40000 You can stay for a day. It's not the case, bro. Have us as friends. You know what I mean? I don't want to impose or force myself to, to uh, embrace nobody. But by the, by the same token, those that I respect and I befriend, there is a difference coming into the city as our friend versus by yourself. You know what I mean? And the difference is we are respected. You know, we are respected and everybody with us, we're going to demand that they be respected. But it ain't no uh, trying to extort or trying to force. We right. don't need that. That's Nigga, they going to fuck with you, right. bro. I don't want that. Because it seemed like if you hear Jay Prince, I'm coming to the city, right? All right, give me 100000 a nigga like me gonna say, fuck that. I'm fucking with his enemies. I'm fucking with niggas that don't fuck with him. That's all that is. If that nigga was doing that shit, if the Migos had to pay 100000 to go to the Halloween party, every time y'all see these niggas out there when it's a boxing match or some type of shit, they not upping it up like that, bro. It's just basically, I'm here. All the homies can't fly. We can't get on a plane with guns. Just make sure I'm straight. That's it. Checking in ain't when you hit somebody to check in, bro, they look at you as you respectful as fuck and you giving them that respect. They fuck with you for that. And why is it? They don't want no money. A high percentage of things that take place that might go wrong in this city, why is mob ties and rap a lot always blamed? Man, you know, all of, of my life, damn near in this game, that been the case. You know what I mean? It's almost like I, I view... Um, I view our brand, our, our brand like a, a Nike brand in the streets. You know, everybody wear it, you know what I mean? Because uh, it's something proud to, to wear and feel good about. But, you know, all of those everybody's, and I've and I done a post say everybody with us ain't one of us. You know what I mean? Everybody wear that hat, wear that attire. You know, don't, you can't give them to me. You know, you can't give... All these people that wear Nike and, and may go shoot up, bang, bang, or whatever in, in Nike attire. Y'all don't try to give it to Phil Knight, whatever that dude name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So don't. Let me tell y'all something like this. All right. The only reason we know about Pablo Escobar and his cartel is not from the Colombians. We know about this motherfucker because of the news. The only reason we know about the Mexican cartel Yes, yeah, some of us got ties to Mexico. We got family and friends, but the majority we only know about it from the news. Jay Prince. The reason why mob ties, right? It's so fucking active and so hated in the city because Jay Prince is 58 years old. This nigga wasn't always 58 years old. Back in the days when a little ghetto boy running all that shit happened, Jay Prince was booked and framed on so many murders that he got off on. You know what I'm saying? They was following him. They was tapping shit. He was getting all type of lawyers, bro, to try to get out of a jam to the point that his whole situation got all the way to the White House, my nigga. 
Jay Prince was up in Texas not doing what he want. The police couldn't catch him and they hated him for that shit. You know what I'm saying? He always got off and he moved very, very smart. That's why this nigga ain't never been caught. So now you're 58 years old and you got sons. They feel like this is a whole fucking, a whole fucking, uh, a crime ring that just hasn't ended since this nigga started it over 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of niggas hate these niggas because what the news and the, and the, and the, and the, and the um, the publicity that these motherfuckers get. But it ain't, it ain't, it ain't all what it seems. Like I said, I don't think these niggas met the killer's nigga take off. I don't think Jay Prince, look, he up there, man. We need to make the news. We need to let niggas know we real mob ties, smoke that nigga. It ain't none of that, bro. It's the term I say, freak accident. Y'all never heard me say that before, but what else can I use, bro? No, what else can I look? Don't try to give me that shit, but they do. You know what I mean? And uh, I learned to accept the things that I can't change, change the things that I can, and have the wisdom to know the difference. Yes, sir. My mama had that hanging up right behind the toilet in the bathroom on her soul. He said it a little wrong. Look. Accept the things that I can't change. You know what I mean? And uh, I learned to accept the things that I can't change, change the things that I can, and have the wisdom to know the difference. He said, I learned that. You read that. And it goes like this. God, please grant me the serenity. That's what it says first before he went on. God, please grant me the serenity. Learn to accept the things that I can't change, change the things that I can and have the wisdom to know the difference. That's the whole quote. Everything he said, but first, it's not what he learned. It say, God, please grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change and yada, yada, yada. That was hanging up in my mama's bathroom. You know what I mean? Because look it up. You know, Matter of fact, where my let's look it up. The nigga said I learned it. Nigga, Can y'all see it? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Look what this nigga said. Nigga, you didn't learn oh, that. With us and with the success, I learned to accept the things that I can't change, change the things that I can, and have the wisdom to know the difference. No, you didn't. You know what I mean? Because, you know, with us and with the success that we have, attained for so many years brings about uh, a certain jealousy and envy and all that kind of shit with it man until you know it's uh like a snowball effect where you really can't stop it you know what i mean you know i give you a story my 114 year old great grandmother gave me she said people are gonna say what they want to say you just don't let it be so so i live that life of just not letting it be so this episode of Million Dollars River Game is also brought to you by the Bush Light Pacific you Time. Said More than 20 of the best NASCAR Cup Series drivers will compete on a quarter mile track. Nigga, Built in less than 50 you days. Tripping. Kicking off the n- by site tickets. Yeah, pre break. Check out all. I mean, from, from the Prince family standpoint, what's the worst? What's, what is What is the. When you when you get into feelings, what's the worst feeling that y'all had that from what happened that night? Like, what's what's the what's the what what eats at y'all the most of what happened that night? Other than take off, yeah, he said shell like, catchers, yeah, and they get them motherfuckers. The Damn. thing that's different about a Verbo vacation home, you always have the. I don't. Shit, say, that's one I of my pistols. I got me a. Uh, I heard you say other than that's that. 357 that's, that's at the top. You know I mean? he, he lost his life. Other than that, the worst thing to me is this clown that came here. I, I wish he. I wish he wouldn't have never came. No, I got me one. What is it? <laughs> see that. No, we don't promote guns, but we looking at. We already talking about revolvers. This motherfucker is chunky, nigga. 
this 357 is probably the most uh this magnum is the most uh one of my most carry guns no lie with, uh, Every day or end, I be having that shit on my leg. Like never the brought this nigga on my in the Houston because he can't think. You know what I mean? He this whole route. Hold on, who you talking was, about? Uh, that came here. I, I wish he. I wish he wouldn't have never came with uh, with Quavo. I, I wish he wouldn't have never brought this nigga in the Houston because he. Mm. So he talking about he talking about the nigga in the beginning that he said pulled out the pistol, right? Cause in the beginning he said a boy pulled out the pistol. That's what made his homie start shooting. So basically it was a boy fault that takeoff got killed. Right? Now that's what we talking about, the same nigga. Uh with Quavo. I, w I wish he wouldn't have never brought this nigga in the Houston because he can't think. You know what I mean? He this whole root of everything happening is from his action. And that nigga said he can't and think. To be frank honest. About the situation, I, <laughs> I wish that bullet would have hit him. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> you know, bro. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> this nigga, real, bro, you let the savage come out. You fifty eight, chill, chill, Prince. And uh, you know what's crazy? I like this nigga. You know what I'm saying? I like this nigga, bro. Just he said, I wish that bullet would. <laughs> Fuck, bro! I ain't wish death upon the nigga. Like, well, but I was a teenager. All my mama boyfriends, yeah, baby daddies, bro. Then just beat my ass. That deserved that. You know what I mean, take off didn't deserve that. You know, so that's the worst thing that I could think of because if he don't make that move, Fuck. then the night is everybody still here and live to see. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me take that. <laughs> and to be frank, honest about the situation, I wish that bullet would have hit him. <laughs> take off. He's the one that deserved that. You know what I mean? Take off. He said he deserved that. You know, so that's the worst thing that I could think of because <laughs> if he don't make that move, then the night is everybody still here and lives see another peachy. day. And you know what I mean? It's it's. It's bubbly and lovey dubby. Right. You know. And I yeah. and I understand that, you know, yeah. the takeoff situation is the most important yeah. thing, you know what I mean? But I'm saying Spitter, you know, what's up, bro? other than that, from 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 the print standpoint, it might be like that that it e ever even was possible that it could happen. Yeah. Now nah, he you talking about I'm the saying? nigga that was with Quavo. Real clearly and uh, you know, as I said, man, the root, you know, everybody, even the police department. Even the police department want to get around the root of what really happened. Now, the police, there's hate a law these out there, bro. that goes on around the world where if me and you go rob a bank and, you know, the police or somebody is shooting, trying to protect that bank, right, and, and hit some innocent person, y'all get charged. Who do you think murder. get that charge? Y'all do. The person that's, that shot that innocent person. Or the root of the situation that was robbing that bank. The root. Okay. That's what we're dealing with right here. You know what I mean? And to all you niggas that think you want to be getaway drivers and all this type of shit, bro, understand, the same situation goes. If you go with a nigga to hit a lick, you drive them there, you just stay in the car, they go in the house, they hit the lick, they kill the person. You're getting charged for the murder too. You're getting the same exact car. I don't care if you're the, if you're the fucking driver. You got d niggas is dumb, bro. Niggas is dumb. This this dude I'm telling you. is the root of this shit. You know what I mean? And and from what I done read in this police report, you know where he's, you know, uh, killing on everything he can tell on jazz, and you know what I mean. He moving on to say he was trying to be robbed, and man, don't nobody who want to rob. You know them little dudes. The last thing they would have done was violated and tried to rob Quavo. Me and Quavo then walked in the hood of Fifth Ward, me, him, and Jazz by ourselves in the whole hood. And when, by the time we hit a few corners, we had 100 plus walking with us. You know what I mean? So he know firsthand. What no 
This thing it's like a lot all that drip with an under Justify that dumb shit that he done. And you know, that's that's just the root of the shit, man. I if I could change it, I would change it. If I was God, <laughs> I would <laughs> Yep, we on that tire now. This nigga got <laughs> that was Bobby showing his age sometimes. This thing got on a card the bus down Cardi's with nine chains and an armor uh, under armor shirt, bro. What the fuck? Well, reach and grab and stop the bullet from hitting the loved one. Cause I, I love him that much. You know what I mean? But I was in a bed sleep. <laughs> just to um, just to elaborate on that, man. Um, That's not. It's just, I think like I. It's not funny. It just goes to what I said, bro. <laughs> like my nigga was not there, bro. Too. Oh, he was at the house sleep. He didn't have nothing to do with this shit. <laughs> he said I was in a bed sleep. <laughs> Why y'all blaming me for this shit, nigga? I was in a bed sleep. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Real shit though, like y'all up here trying to throw me, y'all trying to throw me the fucking mix, and I was in the bed sleep. <laughs> God damn! Oh shit! That's some real shit though, bro. I was. In <laughs> First hand, what no? That's like a lie. <laughs> Justify that dumb shit that he done. Fuck. And you know that's that's just the root of the shit, man. I, if I could change it, I would change oh, it. If I was shit. God, I would have reached and grabbed and stopped the bullet from hitting the loved one. Cause I I love him that much. You know All what right. I mean? But I was in a bed sleep. <laughs> just to um, just to elaborate on that, man. Um. <laughs> Hey, leave the OG alone, bro. He was in a fucking bed, fucking sleep. If y'all mess with Jay Prince alone, I'm gonna fuck y'all up, bro. You mess with, keep fucking with Jay Prince, I'm gonna fuck you up, bro. He was in a bed, sleep, with all this shit happened. <laughs> which is a known, which is a known fucking fact, bro. Leave the OG up out this shit. I'm not fucking lying. <laughs> I think like I spoke before and said that the biggest thing is just me thinking about that whole night and that whole situation to where like you guys spoke. I, I didn't know who old boy was. I forgot. he. Like I said, at first in the beginning, I was like, if anybody, <laughs> if, any, <laughs> if anybody supposed to be there, bro, on this interview, it's supposed to be uh, Junior. But then I didn't know that was his son either till y'all told me. So I think Jay Prince is there for the status. And the, you know what I'm saying? Because everything he hearing, like he said, the big homie was in the bad slate. So everything he hearing is just like us. We hearing it from somebody else. He heard it from them. He probably watching it from the news. He probably watching whoop, whoop, whoop. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> Fuck. Um, how so many speak about the family, how one should have been controlled, why it happened, this and that, another. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're not God. You know what I'm saying? But we believe in him. And we don't feel no man. You know what I'm saying? Because we follow him first and foremost, you know. And personally, I asked myself, was it anything else that could have been done to manicure that situation? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we so used to molding and, 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 and the respect, you know what I'm saying? To where we didn't have no doubt that it wasn't going to be no disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't move like that. No one in association or affiliation with us move with disrespect you know what i'm saying me so we all family you know what i'm saying man? what that nigga say everybody with us ain't with us <laughs> and just to see the way i remember you saying I this saying who talks like smoker that? looking I mean, you can always I tell I when they wear their beanies hat this bitch is a tweaker bro you ain't getting shit. I'm getting more money from this ad than she is. Not even. Oh, yeah. They're my family. Yeah, I ain't. It's being betrayed. Oh, my God. Shedding tears. You know what I'm saying? Behind someone that we care about and love also as brothers. That's the disrespect. You know what I'm saying? That's why. I don't give a fuck. If I did it, I'm not crying. That's why I said I don't feel these niggas had nothing to do with it, bro. Grown man ain't up here crying. 
fucking even though he called Gilly. If you really did it, you really want to call a girl on the platform and keep on trying to plead your shit. You got a grown man up here crying, bro. And with a lot of grown men, me included. With a lot of grown men, me included. Physical don't hurt. I box four times a week. Now I'm in a car accident. Y'all remember that shit? Like, physical don't hurt. It's the emotional shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what get the tears. Them emotional tears is something you cannot fucking stop. You can't work out for that shit. You can't do no push-ups for that shit. You can't train your body to take pain. Like the emotional pain. The physical, you could train your body for that, bro. You can't train your body for that. I don't give a fuck. That's why I do not. I never fought grown men when they cry. That's why when I got to shed a tear, I do it on camera real quick. Beat your ass. I don't care. That emotional shit, though, my nigga, that's, that's some, and to keep it 100, and to keep it 100, these niggas in their 30s, that emotional shit comes, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, as a man, as a kid, as a boy in life, as a male in life, that emotional shit leaves you around 12, 11, 12, 13, maybe, it leaves. It don't come back till you get in your 30s. So your teenage years, all your 20 years, you'll be a raw ass nigga. Bitches don't think you give a fuck. Family don't think you give a fuck. You ain't crying over nothing, nigga. You ain't, you get evicted. You ain't shed no tear because you ain't, yo, yo, your mind ain't trained to think like, oh, I'm evicted. Fuck it, I'll go stay with the homie. But when you in your 30s, you would get evicted. Like, damn, I'm a man. I ain't even got nowhere to live. Feeling like a failure. Your mama can't come visit. Your kids don't even have a room. That's the emotional shit when you get to age when it start coming back out you. But your teenage years and your 20s, man, you don't give a fuck. Keeping it real, nigga. You don't give a shit. This nigga Mikey, he in his 30s, bro. And this nigga is hurt. You know what I'm saying? And I feel for that nigga. I want to enlighten the world. Let them know y'all got y'all got it messed up. You know what I'm saying? Cause we messed up about this too. You know what I'm saying, me? And all respect to take off his family. You know what I'm saying? His loved ones, we love them and respect them too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one hour was took that night. Right. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, bro, say behind this clown, man. We don't move like that. You know what I'm saying? When we say move, we move. When one leg move that way, the other leg gonna move that way. We don't have no out of bounds clown shit going on in our family. This nigga came down here and he was out of line. And he stepped out of bounds, man, without permission. Quavo told me, after I told him, I said, nephew, stop talking about basketball. Leave him. Let me ask y'all this. <clears throat> you remember how I said if you invite somebody to your spot, to your function, your venue, then it's on you to make sure they're safe? So what if you invite that person to your spot and when he come, he put a gun to your head. Do you let him kill you or do you get back off on that nigga? I'm getting back off. Even though I invited you, bro, you tripping. I don't know what video this nigga talking about. This is my first time, nigga, hearing that the nigga from the Migos started this shit. I heard, this is what I heard, Quavo going back and forth with some nigga over a basketball game. Shit got heated. Some nigga from uh, Mob Ties pulled out a pistol, got mad, smoke take off. That's what I heard. Fucking, when they was walking out, I guess Quavo was in the front of the group. Takeoff was from behind, and a nigga grabbed Takeoff and smoked him or some shit. Because the first story I heard was that this thing got hit with a straight bullet. You know what I'm saying? Shit is crazy, bro. Long. He said, Unk, you right. Let's go. Because I don't want to do nothing to one of these niggas before I do some of these niggas. This dude took upon himself to go trying to violate people that didn't violate nobody. That was sitting there on them. Wasn't exchanging words. Wasn't being disrespectful. He just decided he wanted to be a bully that night and prove something to someone I don't know. Cause I, probably because he's the biggest guy out there. I don't know what it was. But we started walking off. You know what I'm saying? Didn't nobody in the family violate nobody. 
A man is going to defend himself. So I can't tell a man not to do that. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't even see that coming. You know, as soon as he made his move and struck. When take or when Quavo speak, oh my God. <clears throat> that shit is. When Quavo speak, bro. Oh my God. Because that that's the interview where everybody going to feel like it's the real story. You know what I'm saying? That nigga Quavo, from my understanding, I know he lost his nephew, but at the same time, I don't think these niggas really did it on purpose. So therefore, in Quavo interview, he has no reason to make them look like the bad guys. He has no reason to make his nephew look like the bad guy. That's going to be the 100% truth when this nigga speak, bro. I heard the nigga uh, got out, bailed out or something. The one that actually pulled the niggas waiting on Quavo. All this shit is speculation, and it's always speculation if you only hear one side of the story. If it ain't take off, know exactly what the fuck happened. Him and Quavo told that nigga exactly what the fuck happened. Didn't hold nothing back. I don't care what kind of relationship y'all think they got. Quavo. That nigga take off know exactly to the T what the fuck happened. And he heard it from Quavo, bro. There's no way that fucking, uh, uh, I mean, Offset, Offset, my bad. There's no way that take off gets smoked and Quavo hold back the information from take off, I mean, Offset, just because they beefing over some music shit. They family at the end of the day. That nigga got the whole info from that nigga Quavo, bro. I'm telling you. That's what niggas is waiting on. Well, uh, individual, I'm like, what you doing? But everything happened like that. And I didn't see no gun in his hand. Cause I would have spoke on that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see that till clippings after the fact that he's already standing up. So he already had his mind on something that shouldn't have been. You see what I'm saying? But it wasn't something that we could could control. See coming, stop. Or none of that because it wasn't one of ours. You're not of us because if you was of us, it wouldn't have never happened. You stepped out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? You and know, and if, they, if they listen to that tape real good, if they can hear the little homie, they can hear the little homie saying, "Man, if you took that wrong, I apologize." This is this is what the little homie was was telling Quavo. Man, I apologize if you took that wrong. I was just talking about basketball. Again, that nigga hearing it from everybody else, just like we was hearing it. You was in the bed asleep, OG. That nigga said it like he was there. We hearing it from everybody else. Let this nigga Quavo. We waiting on Quavo to speak. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't no way. In, we waiting on Quavo to speak, bro. You know how humble can you be after after apologizing like that? A nigga going to hit him with a pistol? Hey, man, you know. Oh, so like he I say, him with the, he pistol? Under no circumstances did takeoff deserve what he got. At oh, all. boy, look at here. That other clown? Hey, man, that's where it's at. There's a little known trick to getting started in real estate and making 1000 2000 or even $10,000 a day. No, it ain't shut up. You keep a... Uh... People keep talking about, you know, and I'm just speaking on it because it's, they keep attaching it to your name and your brand and what y'all build. Keep talking about dice game, whether it's in this situation, whether it's in this uh, Duke the Jeweler situation. Uh, people keep speaking of that. And to Duke the Jeweler, rest in peace to him and condolences to his family. I don't know the brother, but I know he came down here. That's the nigga Things that transpired. I don't have it. no knowledge of it, but to keep talking about this dice game type shit. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Can y'all elaborate on dice game when it's tied to y'all? I mean, I know people were associating me with that dude. If y'all know that dude, the jeweler nigga, I guess he uh, went to Houston to give <clears throat> Boosie a chain or some shit. Y'all let me know if I'm right. He went to Houston to give Boosie a chain. Uh, Boosie was fucking with these niggas. It was a dice game. He gave Boosie the chain. 
They give him the money. When this nigga leave, after giving Boosie the chain, he go to the parking lot to get in his car. Somebody smoked that nigga in the parking lot. I'm hearing that Boosie and them, uh, uh, people was trying to blame that Boosie and them did the shit. That's what I was hearing at first, but nigga, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's the internet. Just like like y'all, I was not there. All that shit, always speculation to somebody admit it. Somebody go to uh, prison for it with the evidence and, you know what I'm saying? All that shit just be speculation to me. I don't take nobody word for nothing to which it got to be. Literally open it shut like 100%. The usual situation because I went to Labusi pool party and he happened to be there and he happened to be standing on me. I mean right next to me. The truth is I never met him before. I had no idea who he is. I didn't even know he was a jeweler until after his passing. And then the night of that game isn't the night that he got killed. He got killed leaving Boosie concert the next night because somebody tried to rob him. Oh, okay. I so, you know, the internet that. play internet games. Oh, okay. But this is a situation with a dude that I didn't even know. I ain't know his name. I had no knowledge of him. I, I ain't know he was from Chicago. I ain't know he was a jeweler until social media started trying to point a finger because he was standing next to me and, that, and it's just... Um, I'm telling y'all, man, these niggas' image, these niggas' image... <clears throat> If these niggas was around there murdering everybody, these niggas would be in jail, bro. These niggas' image on what we got from them is from the news. It's from the internet, bro. That's why we... Everybody got their opinions. Me and anybody else y'all know. You know what I'm saying? Or see on the internet covering these stories and shit. I know for a fact. Like I said, I've been around a long time. 34 now. I know for a fact what this... I don't know about these two niggas. But J Prince, bro, I know what he went through coming up. You know what I'm saying? And this nigga done been through some shit. J Prince. I'm I'm up. OG, oh, he was in a bed. Yeah, that's cool. Nigga laughing and shit. But this nigga was no laughing matter, bro. J Prince done been through some shit. You know what I'm saying? And I know for a fact, everybody opinion. Put it like this. If, if you love me to death, if you a big fan of mine, ghosts don't say nothing wrong. And then I get on here and say... J Prince Neal, some assholes. These niggas done smoked. Uh, the last president, they smoking. Every every rapper that died, they did it, yada, yada, yada. Y'all niggas that fuck with me heavy, gonna run with the narrative. You're gonna be talking to your homeboy, your cousin, or whatever the case, and just run with the narrative. Just keep spreading the shit. And that's how the news and the internet work. Everybody got their narrative on them from the internet, but these niggas don't do shit on camera. We ain't seen these niggas blow a nigga brain out at the Grammys. It's just... Speculation, you know what I'm saying? I know what J Prince been through. I'm telling y'all niggas, I'm this this nigga had fuck the local police. We talking about FBI, DEA, fucking. I just unfortunate that something transpired after another dice game, but neither incidents had anything to do with a dice game. Mm. Yeah, and you know, you know, niggas gonna gamble, man. You know what I mean? It's, you know, all around the world, you know, people gamble, people do different things, man. And that shit was happening before we were born. It's gonna be happening after we die. No, I'm you know talking I mean? about Jay Prince with the ball like, head, nigga. I know a little something concerning that with situation the... <laughs> too. And you know, from what I understand, it wasn't even a robbery. The man had all his jewelry on. You know what I mean? So mm. that's some Chicago business. You know what I mean? And I, I, I hate for people to blame shit on on, on my niggas here in, in, in Texas, in H-Town, that they ain't even got no fingerprints on none of that. You know what I mean? But they quick to try and blame it on us first. Let's keep it 100. Rapper gets smoked in Houston right now. Who we gonna say? Oh, they must have been Jake. That's how it is. I don't know how I got like that because, um, I need to find a documentary or something on this nigga, man. I need to find a documentary. Because the shit that he went through, bro, for him to be having these clubs, he had a few ranches. He had a whole farm, bro. He got a whole farm distributing dairy to the city. This nigga is in boxing right now. He's been in boxing for a while. A lot of people don't know Jay Prince used to manage Floyd Mayweather. A lot of people don't even know that shit. Jeopardizing it over some rap shit, bro. 
that's how he had his mark. That's where he came up at, the rap shit. But jeopardizing it now, nigga, this nigga making more money outside of rap than he ever fucking did. Nigga streaming the ghetto boys, but they ain't, it ain't bringing in no money like his other endeavors and shit. Like, some shit happened that night, and we ain't gonna know the fucking truth until Quavo speak up. Or Offset. But it looked like Offset ain't fucking with these niggas, bro. And, 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 and to keep him 100, and to keep him 100, if I was them and Offset came at me, I wouldn't say shit. I would let bro get his rocks off. I'm not lying. He lost his cousin, bro. I was there when they had, man, fuck that. Y'all making all these interviews. Damn, he right. That's where that grown man and accountability come in. Damn, I did do four or five interviews. This nigga family didn't say nothing. He right. I ain't finna get on the internet like, fuck you, nigga. I was there. Y'all niggas ain't saying nothing, so I gotta uh, speak up. I gotta speak my piece. I gotta put... They need to take... Everything that nigga Offset is saying, just take it, put your phone down, and smoke some kush, bro. That's it. Finish your day. You have to let that nigga get his rocks off, bro. You have to. You have to. First, and then they'll take it everywhere else. But that shit ain't real. What is the, um, what is the meaning, the definition of mob ties? If you're paying over what $80 a month for What the fuck kind of ads these niggas this, killing? I guarantee you're Bro, I'm money. doing this now. So Every 40 seconds, I'm running the ad. Y'all finna get tired of me. Shit, these niggas got Move middle bosses together seconds. in elevated structure. Mm. Damn, I ain't never yeah. Ain't that powerful? I never, I never knew. No, I never heard it yeah. that way. Basically, our goal is... Say that one more time. Movement of bosses uh -huh. together in, in elevated structure. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> MOBTI moving of bosses together in elevated structure. Okay. Okay, nigga. You know what I mean? All these related. You know, all this here. These, these bosses. Mind chains. Is this, yeah, that's, all that's, boss brands. That's Drake. Uh huh. Carl like Crawford. All these niggas need to the change that. Megan Boss. Uh huh. Junior got on one. Mob ties. You know, finesse. Honeycomb. <laughs> Cardi. And then. <laughs> The one and only. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love this shit. <laughs> yeah. The one and only. The, the motherfucker that broke the doors down. Yeah. Oh, good. Absolutely, man. But it's you know I I love that name, man, and I wanna I wanna talk about that for a minute because you know the enemy wanna make belittle us to gain gain conversation and when you got a name like all that Mom, small bro, shit, yeah. they is. That ain't what I put in him from a boy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? From from a babe, mm -hmm. I didn't put no no all that weak shit in him, you know what I mean? He has an entrepreneurial mind. This is something right. that he dreamed, you know what I mean? He been dreaming, blood, sweat, and tears went into this name, and it wasn't on no negative bullshit that they try to paint the portrait on, you know. So now you know the move, you, you know the know the meaning, you know what I mean? A movement of bosses. You know what I mean? A movement of bosses. If you don't remember the rest, just remember a movement of bosses. That and if you qualify, <laughs> that's right. Now, you know, Jazz, how do, how, you know, Jazz not here to speak, but how do Jazz feel? You know, knowing they was coming down here for him. It's yeah. another one? Yeah. Okay. Jazz. That's not Jazz Prince? I got these niggas mixed up like a motherfucker, bro. How many sons he, how long? So he got J Prince, J Prince, and Mike Prince. I thought Jazz Prince was J Prince Jr. But then they said this nigga was J Prince Jr. So what his J stand for? Or is that nigga the third? Jazz Prince the third? Is Mikey the oldest? This nigga, man, I'm I'm gonna be man. Seeing how your kid's successful, I know you love it. I don't know which one is these. As man was heartbroken, man, because, you know, Quavo, them came down because Jazz was having a, a surprise Jazz Prince day. The city of Houston was giving him his day. And Quavo and Jazz is, you know, like, 
tight, tight. You know, so he was coming down to su- support his brother and, uh, you know, be there for him on a, on a moment like that. So you can only imagine, you know, you know how he feel. And then the other piece was, you know, he even tried to get him to leave with him because Jazz was, he wasn't there when everything took place, but he was there earlier. And he, tried, he asked Quavo to leave with him, but the homies wanted to stay and hang out, you know, which was, you know, a noble thing to do. You know, not thinking all this shit. Niggas like to party, like to have fun. Uh, uh, so he, he decided to stay, but he was heartbroken by this shit, man. You know, he was heartbroken and all the way up until this day. How do you, uh, it was a lengthy uh, police report. Yeah. Um, by the guy that was mainly involved with this situation. And uh, how do you feel about things that were said in that police report? Man, you know, if, uh, if Gila would be so nice. Shout out to the fact I had this blunt for an hour and 40 minutes, nigga. Hour and forty minutes, nigga. Just read some of this police report. Just some of the things, so the people won't yeah, think I'm making up words. Read that shit. You know, it, I think it'll be helpful. All right, let me see. So, Willie Bland, who admitted to firing a weapon at the scene, he stated that he seen the two males he had identified as Joshua and Watkins throughout the evening. Real quick, I don't be caring about people business like this, right? Can you download this police report off the internet or did this nigga Jay Prince say, I want to request a police report from the incident? I really want to know that. Even I'll tell y'all why. I know. That he had seen them with guns. He believed that Joshua said something and began like, oh, pulling the gun. Paper. So he reached and this punched him. He thought that males were about to try and rob Quavo. Now, now we can just stop right there. And, and let me just explain that little piece how I feel about that bullshit. Now, clearly, this bland dude and gave a police report that he seen these two guys with guns earlier. But these are the same two guys that he decided he was going to punch with his gun out and hit them with a gun. What do you think? Y'all seen the video. I didn't see the shit. Y'all be on the internet all day, nigga. Matter of fact, I got to pick on my son in a minute. But look. Um, in the po- in the video, do we show that that nigga Blands he he fired on them first, which were made mob tie shoot? Cause if that's the case, my nigga, if you fire on me with your fist, I'm gonna fire on you back. If you fire on me with a pistol, I'm shooting you, bro. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Migo bans the police. Jay Prince is in there while he even talk. Jay Prince, he, look, look, look. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was telling y'all earlier when it's your kids, bro. I love putting myself, I tell y'all all the time, I'm a master. I learn off other people's mistakes. I don't feel like I'm no better than nobody else. That's two. And what's three is in any situation, I don't give a fuck. I always try to put myself in both party shoes. Now we look at Jay Prince. These is your sons into some shit. My son's into some shit. I'm right there. I don't give a fuck how none of you niggas feel about it, bro. I try to get these niggas out of it. If they didn't have, I am right fucking there. Guilty, innocent, no contest, life in prison, on the run, at home, house arrest. I don't give a fuck. I'm there for mine, nigga. So you can't knock this nigga for being there with his kids. Yeah, he said he was in the bed. We was up there laughing about the shit. But at the same time, bro, his kids is involved in being accused of having something to do with one of the biggest rap groups ever. Murder. I am there for my fucking kids, bro. I'm there. Fuck y'all. This ain't gonna happen. You know what I mean? You, you, you seen these niggas with guns and you gonna hit them? You know, these people, these same guys that he talking about, man, if any enemy would have came in their direction, they'd have had some problems. But as you can see, this clown saw that. This nigga said, ain't a kid no more. 
Chaz, how many kids you got? You said ain't a kid no more. Tell me how many kids you got, bro. Tell me how many kids you got. Because if you do got a kid, your kid will always be your fucking kid. They will always be your baby, whether they're 21, 17, 28, 38, 43 years old. That's always going to be your child and your fucking baby. Parents don't stop protecting when your kids get old. What the fuck is your problem? That is forever going to be your kid. And guess what? When they have a baby, that's going to be your grandkid. That's your, That's forever your fucking kid. Bro, what you mean? There ain't no kids no more. Nigga, you tripping. They not to us. They adults to the world, but to the... What? He can look at his kids right now and have a quick flashback of this nigga running around in his diapers pissing and shit. Taking food out the refrigerator all on the floor and shit. What the fuck are you talking about, nigga? You tripping. And decided, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a try them two gone with my one. And then he, he tell a blatant lie about they getting ready to rob... Quavo, and Lord knows if anybody, any of them people would have tried to rob or touch Quavo, it was going to be some some real problems. So that's just not true. Yeah. You want me to finish reading? Yeah, yeah, might as well. Let's let them know how. Cause he, this dude, here's what he doing, uh, Gilly. This dude right here is running back in Atlanta <laughs> getting on the real nigga. So we have to get him a million dollars worth the game. Let them know what now, this doing, is what he's doing out here in, in Houston. Oh. Now, if he's running up under y'all, then and, and you embrace him, that's on y'all. But I can't, I can't hide it from him. I want him to know. <laughs> yeah. And I know y'all, them kind of people, so let's, let's let them know. Um, uh, he believed it was probably uh. Cameron and Joshua <laughs> shooting at him. So he began shooting at Cameron and Joshua. Video showed that Joshua ran back inside the bowling alley. But there is no video evidence showing a firing a gun. Now, just this little piece. Of- <laughs> God damn it! You fucking ass, bro. He like he got another piece of paper, nigga. Say no little piece. You get me in terms of all this fucking. From right here, a large black male. With the victim's group later identified as Willie Bland is seen either striking or... No, no, no. Nigga, you read the wrong line. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It's this one right here, nigga. You, nigga, you read... <laughs> this nigga Jay Prince is funny, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's go to Paul Way say who gave him a gun and all that. Kind of Willie Bland further stated he initially obtained the gun that he discharged from Jazz Prince, who was hosting the group, including Willie Takeoff and Quavo, while they visited Houston. Willie stated that he had asked Jazz for a gun, and Jazz provided them with one that was in the truck. Now listen at that. Mm. Now, Quavo, as I stated, is Jazz's brother. So of course, Jazz don't mind making yeah, sure you know, the homie got some heat. Because we understand that what goes on, right? That's what I told you in the beginning. Checking in it ain't extortion. You can't get on a plane with them guns, bro. You land, you in the city, the niggas you fuck with get you a pistol. That's what they did. I do not feel. And it's just... <laughs> I just thought of something. Why the fuck they gonna give them a pistol if they plan on killing me? Why would they give him a pistol if they plan on killing me? You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm going to keep on saying it. I don't give a fuck how nobody feel. Everybody got their own opinion. They did not have nothing to do with this shit purposely. It wasn't a plan. That's some shit that happened. Just, just, this shit just happened. Right at that, at that time, at that moment, that second, that whatever, bro. That's what you were supposed uh, to do, give him a burn. Nah. You got this clown, you know, and I don't know how it ended up in his hand, you know, but it ended up in his hand. This clown is saying somebody want to rob him that gave him a gun. Why would you give right. a man a gun and try to rob him? <laughs> you know what I mean? This shit just don't add up and make sense, man, is, is what I'm getting to. And I'm just trying to get people to, 
to realize how big a damn fool this dude here is, and now he ratting all over the place, and and, and ran back and you know the bus bus shots and ran to the airport and ran his ass back immediately. You know what I mean? He didn't care nothing about the homie take off. As soon as he done that, he went straight to the airport and and tow ass home. But mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave you with all this paperwork, and you can look at it later on. <laughs> Good though, I ain't finna read this shit. Nah, that Leave Brahmin nigga, you. I don't know what his name is. He wanna be Leave you with all that all this red shit. Y'all not fucking with him, so I don't fuck with him. I block that nigga. Y'all going to Atlanta, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's what I love about Million Dollar What the Game because, you know what I mean, we ain't about that fake shit and we gonna let it be known, whatever it is. You know what I mean? You know, let that shit, definitely when it comes to these rats, we can't protect them kind of individuals. I'm gonna you know? say this, like, I think we, we living in a town in the hip hop culture where it's though. Yeah, I said he's snitching on a guy. It's not snitching, it's not snitching if it's paperwork already, you know what I'm saying? It's not snitching if anybody can Google and shit or go to the police department to request it. It's not snitching, bro. This paperwork wasn't out, then it'd be snitching, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have paperwork, that's how it is. And that's why I hate when y'all be listening to people saying, oh yeah, uh, the hood is dead, the streets is dead and all that type of shit. Never hear, never take that from a nigga that never been in the streets. I seen a hundred podcasts of these square ass niggas telling the streets is dead, the hood is dead. Like, bro, you ain't never been in the streets. That's just like me waking up saying, being a lawyer is dead. The fuck? I ain't no lawyer. I ain't never practiced. Nigga, these niggas out here getting money. You ain't never been in the streets. You don't know how it is. And when it comes to the streets, bro, in order to label somebody a snitch, you can't be word of mouth. You gotta have paperwork. It's like that in the streets and it's like that in the pen. If you label somebody a snitch without paperwork, that'll get you smoked, nigga. That'll get your ass killed. So if the paperwork, if you got the paperwork, it's not a snitch. The paperwork is just validating that you are a snitch. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. A lot of us, um, as we move around, we got to be more level-minded. Yeah. We got to use security. Uh, We got to communicate with each other. I think we just got to be more respectful. Of one another, and we got to be thankful for the opportunities that hip hop has provided us with. Um, there's a lot of brothers out here on the ground that wish they had the opportunities. A lot of dudes is taking penitentiary chances every day to take care of their family, to take care of their kids. But then there's a lot of brothers that don't have to no more, and they out, you know, they in a better situation. And I just want to say this to a lot of people, man. Uh, and another thing, it's y'all fault. It's y'all fault, bro. That y'all see a rapper, 16 years old, y'all fucking with him. 18 years old, y'all fucking with him. He 22 years old, just had a hit wreck. Now he 23, got into a shootout and told her somebody. And that nigga ended up telling. He been talking all his gangster rap shit for seven years. It's y'all fault that y'all believe a famous rapper at 16 was out there drilling all the way until he was 23. That nigga snitched because he's a rapper. You gotta understand, bro. As long as Game Bang had been around, snitching been around. Snitching didn't just happen this year, last year, five years ago, or 10 years ago. Niggas was getting snitched on in the 70s, in the 80s, and the 90s. That's y'all fault. Y'all listening to these motherfucking podcasts, y'all reading these quotes, these say room posts. And y'all going by what they saying about snitching. He's a snitch. Nigga, we seen Gunner snitching years ago on tape. And y'all trying to say gangsta rap, gangsta the streets is dead because of Gunner, nigga? You serious, bro? Y'all got to stop being so gullible. Real gangbangers. Y'all see me by myself all the time. All right? I ain't. Where am I from? L.A., that's it. I ain't never claimed no hood. Y'all ain't never heard me say that. The point I'm trying to make is. When I move around, y'all only see me on camera by myself. The nigga I just got on the phone with, the one that, the homie that got popped, that got shot. I'm around niggas that don't even want to be on camera or can't be on camera. You move a real gangster just in case real situations happen, you don't get this shit. I, when I look at a rapper and his whole team is in his music videos, 
They drip the fuck out all on camera looking like the rapper. You can't even tell if these niggas the homie or the rapper type shit. It's only so far that can go before niggas start telling, bro. I'm telling y'all niggas, man. Y'all got to stop looking at these rappers that talk this gangster shit that been in a mansion for nine years, bro. He ain't doing shit at all. And I'm not saying every rapper, but every rapper that y'all accuse of being a snitch in the streets is dead. That nigga's not no gangster, bro. Every rapper y'all accused of being a gangster, that nigga's not no gangster. We ain't going through this with NBA Youngboy. We ain't going through this with Nipsey. We ain't going through this with Pop Smoke. Now let's go through it with all the niggas y'all consider gangsters that y'all want to say the streets is dead because of these punk motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Grow up, nigga. Grow up, bro. If you ain't a street nigga, don't wait till you get some rap money, give millions of dollars and become one. Mm. Because exactly. what's happening is, you know, and this ain't got nothing to do with this situation right yeah. here, but what I'm seeing in the rap culture is that a lot of dudes was in the neighborhood, only thing they did was rap. They even played sports, they rap. But as soon as they got the millions and they got a bunch of dudes that's in the street that now gonna listen to them because they wanna go for the ride, they wanna get taken care of, they wanna get broke off, now they become this ultimate street nigga. Uh, they talk to people crazy. They carry themselves crazy. They on social media talking gangster shit. Mm. Any real dude that ever operated outside of the law, did penitentiary time, or didn't go to the penitentiary, was in the street game, ducking the police, ducking the stick-up man, ducking the killers, ducking all the bullshit, they not trying to be no street nigga. They waiting Thank for you. The, the, the nearest opportunity to get out the game. Thank you. The real cats that really go through. That's why niggas clown these fucking millionaires, rappers, or whoever that want to be hood when they get on. You know what I'm saying? That's bullshit, bro. And niggas said NBA Youngboy. NBA Youngboy. The first time I started covering NBA Youngboy is when he went to jail for a drive-by shooting that he was found guilty of. You know what I'm saying? When it... When it when it kind of rap music, that that's all it is. That's all it is, bro. It's entertainment. You don't have a freedom of speech no more, but when y'all listen to people rap that shit, bro, take it with a grain of salt. Because none of us, 99.9% of the rappers that's out right now that talk that gangster shit, we never see in the action. We just taking these niggas' word for it. And we following it. Because he know how to rap like it. He know how to dress like it. His Instagrams look like it. And he carry himself like it. So therefore, we taking these niggas' word for it. This what I say, it got to come with age, bro. It's no way that I'm going to become a, a rapper, a YouTuber, an actor. After I've been through all this shit to get on camera and start banging, let niggas know where I'm from. That's little boy shit. That's how you get hit with a Rico. And mock my words. That's going to start happening with a lot of these major gangs, bro. You go ahead and say you from a major gang, rapping in your songs. and whoop, whoop, whoop. When they hit them, they're going to hit your ass. And guess what? You might get it more because you the nigga with the money. It look like you funding the gang, nigga. I knew that since day one. I ain't finna get on camera, even if I was banging. Go ahead and get on camera. It's like, yeah, I for whoop de whoop for whoop. Nah. And I tell niggas that all the time. It makes no sense to get on here and try to be successful and keep on banging. Because there's still real gang bangers out there. So, therefore, if I got on camera saying I'm a crypt this, crypt that, crypt this, I don't give a fuck how entertaining my ass. Real bloods ain't gonna fuck with me. And I ain't talking about a regular blood. I'm from L.A., bro. What I mean by regular bloods and real bloods, regular bloods, they'll fuck with you if your shit dope. Your song popping. They probably won't play it in front of the homies, but they'll play it at home. Follow you on Instagram. Real blood niggas ain't gonna give a fuck if you a crib, nigga. They not following your Instagram, watching your YouTube videos, or hearing your songs. Now, let me get on here and say I'm a blood. The crib niggas not fucking with me. So why get rid of 50% of your fucking audience just because you want to let niggas know where you're from? Because niggas like me don't give a fuck. Are you entertaining or not, bro? The fuck you banging on camera for? I was around before the internet. Nigga banging on internet was punk shit, little boy shit, all on here with your rags. No, niggas wasn't doing that. It just got popular over time. That shit is crazy to me, bro. This shit, because they know what they up against. So why do y'all guys... Wait till y'all get millions of dollars and want to be tough-ass street niggas. There you go.
the thing that's different about a verbo vacation fuck. home? What the you always fuck? have the whole place to yourself. These no stranger to the dip. Yeah. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Like we we get to the point where as though this shit is just getting out of control, man. You know what I mean? Everything ain't gotta be no aggressive shit. Everything ain't gotta be tough. Everything ain't gotta go to the internet soon as some shit happen. You know, if you you know, a lot of lot of brothers that go through stuff in the game got each other number, or you got the manager number, you know somebody in the camp. If you out here you doing your thing in the music game and somebody in every camp that you know, or you got somebody that knows somebody in the camp where y'all can make a call and y'all can sit there and really talk with some real grown man shit. Right. Yeah. And let me say this, man. To all the rappers out this, here, my fucking lighter, all the athletes that's made it, do me a favor, man. Stop acting like y'all regular niggas, man. You're not. You made it out. You're worth an asshole full of money. You are no longer a regular nigga out here, man. So you yeah. got to protect yourself as so. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers want to want to make it out the ghetto and understand how hard it is to make it out the ghetto and then act like they regular niggas. No. Motherfucker when, when, when you got a certain you. special ability that you able to do out here and change your whole family, everybody around you, the way they living and them, they circumstances, but you still want to act like a regular nigga. It'll can Hey, Chad, how he talk about Ja Morant? Y'all talking about that red laser, red beam shit? <laughs> how you talking about John Moran? NBA players, too. Been seeing that over the last 10 years. Y'all niggas need to chill the fuck out. NFL players, R&B singers, fucking Trey Songs to be direct. Y'all niggas need to chill the fuck out. This nigga Trey Songs tried to fight. This nigga Bud Crawford. This nigga Terrence Crawford. The w WBO welterweight champ. He would have fucked his ass up. This nigga tried to fight Terrence Crawford at 50 Cent birthday bar or, or 50 Cent bash or some shit. The fuck wrong with these niggas, man? Point of these niggas trying Catch to Catch up to you, bro. man. Because you're not regular, so you can't do regular shit no more. That's just the reality of this shit. Because God put those type of blessings on you that wherever you go, motherfuckers know you. Wherever you go, you somebody. You Stay cause strapped. pandemonium. You, Stay so you not regular no more. We, you, so you can't act like you regular. You can't carry shit like you regular. Because it only take one time for some not regular shit to happen, and you're done. So I they say as a major celebrity, you got to get lucky every time to make it back to your house. But it only takes one time for a nigga to kill you. It takes your ops to look. They only have to get lucky one time. You have to get lucky every time. You gotta protect yourself, bro. Putting yourself in different situations, going to apartments, fucking bitches you ain't supposed to be at, bro. Need... Rest in peace of trouble. Rest in peace of trouble, bro. I just wanna put that out there too to all the motherfuckers that's out here that's eating and that's making it. Because I be seeing athletes from my city who you watching these niggas on TV, but then you seeing these niggas chill down North Philly. Yeah. For what? No, that's real. You spent your whole fucking life in North Philly. That, that's, that's what you call a million dollars, what the game y'all giving. But that's why it's also important, you know, even though people got this, this fucked up check-in situation, you know what I mean, all twisted, but relationships is valuable, man. Worth more and than important. money. The, the right he said, stop trying to blame the youth. I'm not blaming the youth. It's just that. Oh, boy just said Soldier Boy, for example. A lot of thing, a lot of people, including Soldier Boy himself, y'all think that him shooting them niggas that ran in his house makes him gangster. That nigga was at home. That makes it self-defense. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why I be talking about the youth. A lot of y'all can't differentiate that shit. Y'all can't understand self-defense between being a gangster. A nigga moving out to L.A. banging. Y'all think he the hardest nigga when he was just living in, like, Virginia or North Carolina or some shit. Banging don't make you hard. Being a gangster don't make you hard. It's a difference between a gangster and a thug nigga. A thug nigga can be a gangster, too. But a thug nigga can be also be a nigga that don't bang, that don't take shit for nobody, and to beat your ass like a motherfucker. 
Still got bitches, still got money, still got well respected. I mean, still well respected. Y'all can't. That's why I put it up on the youth, bro. The internet be raising you niggas, man. I keep telling y'all. If y'all don't learn shit from me, fuck the con. This bullshit content, if you don't learn from me, stop watching my motherfucking channels. I got seven of them. This is my sixth channel. Fuck this channel if y'all don't fuck with what I'm saying. Because I ain't going to sit here and tell y'all nothing wrong. Y'all want to talk about life? Let's do that. Talk about growing up, banging, trying to be that. Let's do that. We talking about getting shot at? Let's talk about it. I've been there. Losing your brother. Losing somebody close to death. Let's talk about it. I've been there. Oh, you ain't got your daddy? Me either. My daddy got life for murder when I was nine years old. Let's talk about it. I've been there. You lost your mama? Let's talk about it. Shit just happened a year ago. Your kid's disabled? Let's talk about it. My oldest got autism. I've been through life, bro. That's why I be trying to talk to you niggas. I wouldn't tell y'all nothing wrong. Right ones. You know what I mean? They're valuable and important. And, and me, you know what I mean? When I travel, I, I've been doing this shit for a long time. And, you know, anybody wise would want to know how you was able to do this and be successful as long as you was able to do it. You know, I was always that kind of inquisitive nigga. I wanted to know, man, show me when, where, and how to make these things happen. So, you know, I guess I'm saying all that to say that, you know, Gilly and Wallow is absolutely right about what they saying when 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 they saying put some protection on your ass. You know what I mean? Your right, ass right, is right. valuable enough to put some protection on it. Security. And some of y'all going to do what you want to do. So, I ain't going to tell you don't do this, don't do that, but I am going to tell you put some protection on your ass. You know what I mean? Your objective should be to make it home to your family, your woman or whatever every day you leave out the house. You have to think that way. You know what I mean? And you can't embrace these clowns. You know what I mean? Because of a nigga. And then as a black man, when you leave the house, like he said, it's not a guarantee you're going to make it back to your bed. You know, you don't got, in America, bro, black people is the only race because you don't got, well, let me take it to the mask because they be getting down. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is when you leave your house, you got prejudiceness coming your way that you will encounter. You got racism coming your way that you encounter going to the police. I mean, to the store. You get pulled over; it's a possible chance that you can get killed by the police. You going to pick up your daughter? You had to swap me. You look like you from somewhere. It's a possible chance another black man will kill you. And I ain't talking about the Chinese, the Japanese, and the white people. It's a possible. It's a higher than anybody that another black man will kill you. Especially if you grew up in the ghetto, in poverty. And people always like, why they can't, why why ghetto, like, why is it so bad? People can't whoop de whoop whoop. It's 200 countries, right, in this world. Y'all name me one one ghetto or place of poverty that don't have crime that's not bad people don't pick the family you don't pick your mom and you don't get to pick where you born or live at until you, I mean where, where you get to live at until you turn 18 bro so yes a lot of people are fortunate to grow up in a one bedroom house with eight fucking brothers and sisters like I did with no man in the house like I did people do grow up like that bro black people got it hard out here a black man have it hard out here I'm telling you and you can never you can't re, you, you just can't relate if you not you just can't relate sweating and shit Police get behind you, feel like you on the deep. Y'all know how y'all go down a roller coaster, feel like your heart in your ass. That's how I feel when the police get behind you. We got on a fly ass outfit from head to toe. We is fly. But when we get in the car, we gotta take our hat off. Cause we're gonna get pulled over and stereotyped as a gay banger. It's not illegal 
to drive with one hand on the wheel. Look it up. But what black people do when they see the police, we putting two hands on the wheel. Niggas is scared. No excuse to pull me over. These motherfuckers will kill you. Every black man from, from Tyree to fucking every black man that got killed by the police didn't think they was going to get killed by the police. They know it's a possibility, but think it was going to happen to them. Shit happened on back streets. It happened on main streets. It happened in your city, my city, everywhere, bro. Black people got it so hard out here. And people, all oh, they always speaking this pro-black shit, this pro-black. You got to understand, bro. If I walk into a job interview right now, if I walk into a job interview right now as a black man with a degree, mind you, your degree shows that you are capable and you are eligible. Your degree do not guarantee you a job. It's up to wherever you're applying that to hire your ass or not. With that being said, say if I have a degree, right? That is so perfect for the job I'm trying to get. I go in the job interview. I'm dressing like me. I'm not finna dress no type. Of, I'm dressing like me, but I got a degree. I try to get this job. The second interviewer is a white boy. But when I get my job, I got my degree. I want to make sure my office is cool. Woo -woo -woo. I'm letting them know that. Then you got you a white boy that come in after me with no degree. Do anything you say, boss, and woo -woo -woo. who y'all think they going to hire? The black man that demands, the black man that won't respect and his amenities to his degree that he worked hard for and been to college, or are we going to get the white? It's a win-win. It's a win-win, bro. Y'all got to understand that. Uh, Y'all don't have to understand, and I'm sorry. But understand how we are how we are sometimes. Just understand that shit. They thinking, oh, no, it's just that race shit. And whoop de whoop whoop. When it come to race, we are not. See, see, a lot of people, look, right now, I'm 34 years old. A lot of y'all can call me an old head, right? Which is not, but y'all can call me that if you're 17, 18, 19, 24 years old. In all reality, when it come to the internet, we are the dinosaurs of this shit. This shit is going to be here hundreds and thousands of years after we pass. Think about it. We are the first people to get the internet, bro. Shit only been around for 20 some years. When you look at slavery... We still like the dinosaurs of the free world, bro. With that being said, you still got grandparents that could tell you what happened in slavery because they was in that shit. They remember that shit. You could tell them what happened when it was. They could tell you when they only had whites only bathrooms, whites only water fountains. They grown up. They are still in that shit. This is not fast forward to the future. We trying to make all this shit work now. We still dinosaurs in this shit, bro. We are the first. A lot of people don't understand that, my nigga. They don't understand. This shit is hard today as a black man because you still got racism going on. And I don't give a fuck who you are. If you are born from day one, as soon as you come home from the hospital and you in the house and your family is Christian, you a fucking Christian. If they Jehovah, if they Muslim, your ass going to be in Kingdom Hall. Your ass going to be at somebody's church every Sunday. You don't get to pick that shit at all with that being said when well, you got grandparents that still in a racist ways which they are and if you black watching this screen stream you know what the fuck i'm talking about that shit rubs off on the kids and the grandkids and this and that and that and this i promise you bro today as a black man you have to i have to you have to teach your kids about racism they new to this shit your kid is in the fucking third grade Talk to them about racism because they don't understand why the white teacher let the kids go play first and they always got to go last. They feel like it's just school structure. I'm telling y'all niggas, this shit is still brand new. This shit is still brand new. Nigga that don't know how to think is a dangerous man. You know what I mean? And that's what we're dealing with with this conversation that we're having right now. You know, a nigga that don't know how to think is a dangerous man. 
he a, a man that feel like every altercation have to be have to end with violence. He's a dangerous man. He's a damn fool, and it's a matter of time before he meet a damn fool. You know what I mean? And the ending gonna be bad. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're dealing with. And and if there's anything that needs to change, is man, it, leave them damn fools in the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all know the ones that. Oh, about to be three. Gotta go kill my baby, bro. I think I'm gonna do this again tonight. If I don't, I'm gonna do it tomorrow for sure. Fuck with y'all heavy. Y'all be careful out there and be cool. Till next time, 100.